Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the date picker to the next level. Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos from both Adam and myself. All right, so I did this video showing you how to create a single date picker in Power BI. You didn't wanna use a relative date slicer because didn't quite have the functionality. You didn't want to use a filter pane because it was hidden because you want this slicer on the page. You didn't want to use a custom visual, so I showed you how to create a date picker. It was well received, but there was some really good constructive feedback saying, Patrick, it's great, but I can't use it because I have to duplicate my measures just to use it. So if I have 10 measures and I want to use all the date picker for all 10 measures, I need to duplicate it. So I'll now I have 20 measures, too much work, right? You always talk about how efficient you are with well, that's not efficient, all right? You're just kind of lazy when you build that out. Can we get a better solution? I was like, yep, I thought of something. And in this video, I'm gonna show you. So enough of all this talking, you guys know what I like to do. Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Originally, when you build this out, when you uh, use a date picker, the first thing you wanna do is set up the slicer properly. So you choose your date, you set up the slicer to be either before or after, or before or after slicer. Let me just kind of do a recap on what this pattern looks like. So what you would do is, if you wanted to use this single date, use this as a single date picker, you right click, you do new measure, and you can do something like this, right? So whatever the measure name is, you give it a name, and then you can use this little tidbit of code right here. So the selected date, since I'm using after, will be minimum, and then you can write the code out, whatever measure that you wanna use for the single date. The challenge is you have to repeat this for every measure. Like I said, if you have 10, 10 measures, now you're gonna have 20. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And so don't worry about this, let's disregard this. And so to create this dashboard so that it uses the my single date, right? My date picker here, I literally have to take all of my existing measures or just the measures that I'm displaying on this page and reproduce them. And that's not a good thing. That's not efficient. People were really vocal about it. And I appreciate it. And I kind of had this dumb look on my face like, uh, but I got an idea for you. I know, I think I know how to fix this. All right. So let me show you. So instead of doing, instead of creating these, right, make sure you copy the pattern on your clipboard and then you can delete these. Pretend that my collapse here is deleting them all. Right. Let's delete them. The first thing you want to do is make sure you've downloaded the latest version of the Power BI desktop. And then, and then make sure you download the latest version of Tabula Editor. Right. Yep. We're going to use Tabular Editor for this. And some of you already, already may be thinking, ah, I think I know what he's going to do. So you click on Tabular Editor. You go here. You go here. Expand Tables. You don't have to expand Tables. You right click on Tables. Choose Create New and use Calculation Group. And then we're going to call this the Date Picker. Right. And then just right click on the Date Picker and choose New Calculation Item. And we're going to call this Single Date. Just like that and then paste that code in there, the code from the pattern that you already wrote. And all you need to do now is take total sales, replace it, or whatever the measure name it is, re replace it with selected measure. Open, close parentheses. Let's format it up in a short line. Wonderful. And then click save, save it back. You can click the save icon here or do file, save, file and save, all right? I'm just gonna use the icon. Click it back, go to my model. It says, hey, you got to refresh. Yeah, let's refresh this. And now everything is good to go. Now, let's switch over to another page that I created. This page only uses the original measures, okay? What you could do at this point is you could select each individual item and use a put a visual filter on each individual item. So I can create a visual filter for my calculation group. If every item on the page, if you want to filter every item on the page, don't do that. Now, that's not efficient. Simply go to your calculation group, grab the name or whatever you called it, drag it to filter on this page and then select single date. And you'll see now the values drastically change. If I click it and choose the 25th, you'll see that the date is changing and it's filtering down just to that individual day. Like I said before, you got two choices, right? You can put it on the page or you can selectively 
put it on each item. What do you guys think, right? This is so much better than creating all those duplicate measures. Just go delete those, create a quick calculation group, use the exact same pattern, apply the filters to the page or to your individual elements and you're ready to go. All right, what do you guys think? Did you watch the old day picker video? If you didn't go check it out, right? And then watch this one and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, comments about this or any great feedback, you know what to do. Post it in the comments below. It's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel. Hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.